It's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are seated here, congregated here to listen to the words of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we all know, month of Ramadan is around the corner. The blessed month of Ramadan, the sacred month of Ramadan, the most auspicious month in the whole year is around the corner. Every year before Ramadan, around the UK, not only around the UK, across the globe, every Islamic place, whether it's in the English language, whether it's the native language, we have programs welcoming Ramadan. That how can we make preparation for Ramadan? So we could make Ramadan very productive, prosperous, something which will be beneficial for us in this world and the hereafter. So we welcome Ramadan, we make preparation for Ramadan. Many a times I say, it's not only preparation for the month of Ramadan, it's preparation for our life, and by making preparation for our life, we're making preparation for the hereafter. Or else, if we don't make any preparation now, what will happen? Like the Quran says in Surah Al-Fajr, وَجِيءَ يَوْمَ إِذِمْ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَ إِذِمْ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ وَأَنَّا لَهُمْ ذِكْرَى on, the, on that day when Jahannam will be brought and what will happen, a person will realize what's happening. Am I going to be entering this Jahannam? Allahu Akbar, yatadakkarul insan. He will be reminding himself, he'll be thinking that what did I do in this life? I wasted it. I just completely didn't put any kind of importance to the worldly life that I was in. I didn't actually understand the purpose. Wa anna lahu dhikra. But it's too late. It is too late. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hatta idha jaa ahadahum al qala rabbi rujoon. When death approaches one of them, they say, Rabbi rujoon, Allah, we turn me back. Why? La'alli a'amun salihah. So I could carry out good deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla. Never. Innaha kalimatun huwa qa'il. These are words that you are saying. Now there is no coming back to this world. Now you need to go to the barzakh, the life of the grave. So this is an opportunity for us to prepare not only for the month of Ramadan, for the whole of our life, in turn that we can be prosperous, successful, we can gain salvation in the hereafter when we close our eyes. It's very important. So we need to sit down with that perspective, with that understanding, with that perception that we want to make a transformation in our life which will be permanent, which is not going to be temporary. Unfortunately, what happens nowadays is we prepare for the month of Ramadan from the first day. Many of us will make a timetable and we will be performing our five time prayers. We'll be reciting our Quran. We'll be giving extra sadaqah. And then the month finishes. When we hear about Eid, then we go back to square one. This is a big problem that we have. On the day of Eid, you will see our same brothers and sisters who were performing the entire month, they did not miss a single salah. But on the day of Eid, they have missed the Fajr, they have missed the Zohar, they have missed the Asr, Mother of Isha, and back to square one immediately. So that's why the Prophet said, that the most beloved action in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that action which is done constantly, even though it's small. So we need to continue. So my message to our brothers and sisters and myself is we build, we build, we build, we don't demolish the building. What I mean is the building of the Akhirat. We need to continue building and we as Muslims, we are not part-time Muslims. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu dhulu fi silmi kaffa. Oh believers enter Islam entirely, not a part-time Muslim. That in the month of Ramadan the masjid is full, after the month of Ramadan from the day of Eid, back to square one. No, no. We have to be a strong believer. Wa'bud rabbaka hatta yaktiyaka al-yaqeen. Worship your Lord until yaqeen, until death comes to you. So our preparation should be in this way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing us. He's addressing us. In Surah Al-Baqarah, in the second juice. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum siyam. All the one, those who believe. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, it means that Bond that link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood Allah ta'ala says that he refers to that strong bond that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not addressing humanity, he's not addressing mankind, he's addressing the Muslims, the mu'min, the believers only. So he knows that these people are my obedient servant. Whatever order, whatever commandment, whatever injunction I'm going to put forward, they're going to 
going to be applying that. It's like the father saying, oh my beloved son. So the word son is already telling us there's a biological link and bond. So the child, the boy or the girl will listen. So in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yu ladina amanu. That imani co connection, that link, that bond, that attachment, that is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying out of love and affection. What is he saying? Kutiba alaykum siyam. Fasting has been made compulsory. So many times we think to ourselves, Allah Akbar, fasting, it's going to be very hard. Many of us nowadays, we think to ourselves, fasting now in the month of May and June is going to be very, very hard, difficult, 18, 19 hours. So person, his psychology, his mentality, his, is telling him that it's going to be hard. He's already started to think that many brothers and sisters are already phoning. Oh, Muftisa, I'm going to be having exams. So can I miss my fast? Can I break my fast? Already the fasting has been started, which is a blessing for the believers. But already people are trying to find excuses that I will be revising for my exams. So in revision, in between the revision, I need to drink a lot of water. So that's a good excuse. So I can break my fast. Another person is saying, I do very strong manual work and because of this reason, what's going to happen? I have to start my job at 6 o'clock, my shift starts at 6, finishes at 2. For this reason, can I break my fast? So many people are coming with so many different excuses. I'm a diabetic, I've got high blood pressure, I've got this, I've got that. So already person, he hasn't even tried. This is the biggest problem we have in psychology, they have these three Steps, thought, emotion, behavior. So what happens is if the person is thinking low, his emotion is going to be low. If the emotion is low, then his behavior is going to be validated in that way. That is going to demonstrate his actions in that way. No, no, I can't do it. I just can't do it. But our thought process, we need to make the bar higher. No, no I can do it. There's no problem. Once Sayyidina Ahmad Khalil radiya Allah ta'ala anhu, he was disciplining a person. He was drinking in the month of Ramadan and he was so angry and upset, he said, what kind of person are you? even our children who are breastfeeding? They don't break the fast. That at the time of suhrut they have the milk, breastfed at that time, and at the time of iftar they are breastfed again. <coughs> that was the way, that was the thinking of the Sahaba Ikram, the thought process there. No, that even the children can keep. And look at us, we are already starting to have this low morale, and we are thinking to ourselves, no we can't do it, it's too hard. This is a blessing. The beloved Prophet ﷺ says, if people knew the value of the month of Ramadan, they would desire and wish that the entire year was the month of Ramadan. So this is how valuable. So a person needs to get this in mind. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Kutiba alaykum suya. It's not hard because why? It's not something new to you. Kama kutiba ala min Like the way it has been made compulsory on the people before you. So he was. Compulsory on the people before you, it was essential for them, they fasted, so you should be able to fast as well. It's not something new, other people have done it, so you should be able to do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing us emotionally, psychologically, is preparing us that nothing to worry about. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the verse by saying, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ End of the day, the benefit is yours. The benefit, the virtues, the, all the advantages is for you. So you become God-fearing, you become God-conscious, you have been prepared and you can prepare yourself by keeping that fast in the month of Ramadan for the rest of the 11 months. So a person, subhanAllah, he stays away from drinking, from eating, from cohabitation, from smoking, from all those things in that one month. So the rest of the 11 months, even though you'll be having the permission to eat, drink and have relationship, but a person will be able to do that in a moderation format. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person who is being stopped and restrained from all those even permissible things, so subhanAllah, he's been trained in that one month, so the rest of the 11 months should be very easy. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرُ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرُ Allah is intending for you easiness. He is not intending any hardship. Do you know this kind of linguistic in the Arabic language is used for an audience who are not convinced. Like a teacher, a tutor, examiner, he says to the student, look the exams will be very easy. 
When he says the exam is going to be very easy, that includes that the exam will not be hard. There's no need for the teacher, the tutor, the examiner to say the exam will not be hard. Because when he says the exam is going to be easy, he has the meaning within it that it's not going to be hard. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have just said, You read the Nabi Kumulius. Allah intends easiness for you by of making you fast. He goes out of his way to say, Wala yuridu bikum ul-us. He doesn't intend hardship for you. Because why? Because through the fasting, Allah is preparing us for our rest of the 11 months and then ultimately the life, entire life, which will be beneficial for when we close our eyes. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yuridu Allah bikum ul-us, Wala yuridu bikum ul-us. He's convincing us because we as an audience, what was the reason for 18, 19 hours of fasting and what's the benefit of that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying by making you do this, you will realize the value afterwards. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that That's so you complete the figure. When we read the verses of fasting, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says prior to this, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهَرَ فَلْيَسُمْ the person who witnesses the month of Ramadan he should be fasting. So already Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the order to fast. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walitukmilul idda. So that you complete the figure. And you know the word takmil, tukmil idda, it's from the word ikmal. Akmala yukmilu any ikmal means to complete something in perfection. When you just complete it, I kept my 30 days fast, yes. From the 6th of May, I kept it all. From morning till dusk, I kept it. But takmil, it doesn't only mean to complete. It means complete with perfection. Keep the fast according to the way shown by Allah and His Messenger We're going to fast in that way, that in the fasting is not only abstaining from eating and drinking and cohabitation, we're going to abstain from any kind of swearing, lying, backbiting, slandering, teasing, taunting, abusing, insulting, making sarcastic remarks, everything which will be detrimental for our spirituality, we're going to even refrain from them as well. That will be tukmil idda. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wanting us to fast in a way that when we are fasting, we're fasting in that way, we're doing it to the perfection. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He perfect, completes the religion. And on that historical day of the day of Arafah, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi is performing his hajjatul wada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam in the verse, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Today I have not only completed your religion, I have perfected your religion. So the word Akbar is used. So it's completed and it's perfected. There's no need to add or subtract anything from the deen. So anything which is added that will become a bid'ah. So a person needs to keep that in mind. And he took mul'idda. So we complete the 30 days in that way, the way we want to make sure that we do it according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa way. So that's why a person needs to keep that in mind. Or else we will be fasting like the hadith says, Kam min sa'imin laysa lahu min suyamini illa al-dhama. Another narration says illa al-jur. Wa kam min qa'imin laysa lahu min qiyamini illa al-sahar. That so many people fast, they don't get nothing out of their fast but hunger and thirst. And there's so many people who stand up in prayers, whether it's tahajjud, whether it's tarawih, they get nothing out of it but stay awake. So what is that telling us? That a person, he might be fasting literally or outwardly, externally, but because he is not fulfilling the requirements, he's not fulfilling the requirements which Allah and His Messenger وسلم, has given us, then his fast doesn't bring the benefit that it should bring. So a person needs to keep in mind that in the month of Ramadan, the things which were haram before Ramadan, in Ramadan it becomes even worse. Whether it's backbiting, whether it's slandering, whether it's lying in the month of Ramadan, it becomes worse. Some of the great scholars, they said if the person backbites, his fast breaks <coughs> to this extent. At the time of the Prophet there were two ladies and they were brought to the Prophet that they are so hungry, can they break their fast because they can't take that acute hunger, that pain of hunger, starvation. So the Prophet said they've already eaten, so why are they hungry for? No, no, they have eaten. How do you know? Because bring a plate. So a plate was brought and they were told to vomit. And when they vomited, you could see fresh meat coming out from the mouth. So as a miracle, the Prophet ﷺ showed 
to the Sahaba Ikram that these two people they ate flesh of the Muslim brother and Muslim sister. They backbite it. So that was shown by the miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu and what we are doing Allahu Akbar nowadays when we sit down we can't have a conversation without backbiting, without slandering. It's become a norm of our community, of our discussions, of our gossip, of our gathering nowadays. So it's very very important that this fast, well, it took we do it with proper perfection, we don't just complete it. Now we just count nowadays, subhanAllah, you'll see many people on the front room or in the sitting room or in the kitchen, they'll be putting number first fast, second fast, and they'll be taking it off. It's like a burden. It's become a burden. Because the problem is we don't fast throughout the year. That's why I say to my brothers and sisters that why are we made this habit just fasting in the month of Ramadan, those who fast, Alhamdulillah. But why are we not fasting other than the month of Ramadan? Our beloved Prophet ﷺ, his noble habit was to fast on Mondays and Thursdays. Where is that sunnah gone from our lives? So each one of us, I could remember in our madrasa days, we used to fast most of the days so we could study more. So we don't need to eat, if we eat we need to go to the bathroom. So we will be saving, so we used to try to save minutes. So we can read extra, we can study extra, we can recite the Quran extra. So Alhamdulillah because of this we kept the habit. Going that after, because I always say to my young sisters that whatever habit you make when you're young, they will remain afterwards. So our young brothers were listening, whatever habits. So I always say to our students in our madrasa as well that get all the good habits. If you have bad habits, these bad habits will remain afterwards. So even I say don't talk slam. So like one place I went to do uh, bayan, so they said, Mufti Sam, we can do the tafsir. I said, okay, I'll do the tafsir. So, this person, subhanAllah, when he was introducing me, he said, okay, I'm going to call Mufti Sam, and he's going to kick off the tafsir. So, you must be listening to much football, whatever, but the habit remains. Kick off the game, so you say, kick off the tafsir. So, these bad habits remain. So, slang words. Our scholars, subhanAllah, they used to use words, they used to say, even when using words, like Mufti Tati Usmani Sardamad Barakatu, he says, once I told my Sheikh Dr. Abdullah Arifi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and he wanted to go to his uh, destination somewhere. So basically, I said, I will leave you to leave you. So don't leave me to leave you. I will leave you to leave you. Allah Akbar. We wouldn't think too much. What, what, what's the problem? To leave you to leave you to leave you. To leave you means you don't throw it away. Like we'll say, I'll drop you off. Drop off is even worse from the top to the bottom. <laughs> we should supposed to say, I escort you. You know, proper English. <laughs> so in the Urdu way, it may punja karanga. Look at the beauty. You know, like we say many times, Mufti Shafi Sarahmatullah says that we should not say, Ham jaldi se namaz par lai, then aram se khayenge. Namaz jaisi cheez, jaldi se karne ki <laughs> Allah Akbar. क्या कहना चाहिए हम जल्दी से कहते हैं फिर आराम से नमाज पढ़ते हैं ये तो नहीं कहते अल्लाह अकबर प्रभुम से अरे बिलाल हमें राहत पहुंचाओ या बिलाल आजान दे दो राहत पहुंचाओ मेरी आंखों की ठंडक नमाज में तीस तीन माइंगस्टर्स वी हैव टू लर्न फ्रॉम ओन यू यंग No, how in use our our Hazrat Muhammad Yusuf Mutala Sahib to say, "Ye kena ke ye shadi ke bazaari lafz hai, nikah ko nikah." So these, even though I'm not saying it's haram to say, but I'm just saying that usage of words and nowadays our youngsters the way they use the words, Allahu Akbar. You know these wrong words. Like nowadays, anything which is good, it becomes you know wicked. Wicked is something evil, but wicked now means something good. So it's the opposite meaning now. So these are the points that we have to remember. So our saying here is when we do something, we do it to the perfection. When it took me to so we complete the ta'ada, we complete the figure with perfection. When it took up birullah, now when we have done this, then subhanAllah will be so happy. You know, when it took up birullah ala mahda, when we have done the fasting with perfection, on the day of Eid, what do we do? Takbir at the Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So we'll be doing the takbir ala mahda. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us. So we'll be happy. So we did everything according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us. We have to remember we are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So we will do things according ala ma hadakum, according to the way Allah has guided, not the way we want. Nowadays we have made Islam the way we want to make it. We have to be abd. The servitude have to be there. Abdiyat. Abdiyat means the servitude. Rabudiyya. That we are the servants of Allah. We are not servants of our own desires. That's why in the Holy Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Afara'ayka man ittakhata ilahahu hawa. Have you seen that person who has made his desires, his diet, his God? He just follows his desires. Lu'ina abdud dinar. Lu'ina abdud dirham. Curse on the servant of dinar. Curse on the servant of dirham. Always counting money, counting money. So a person is always thinking of money. A person shouldn't be thinking. He goes according to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah has ordered. So a person, abdir. When we are told to break our fast, then what happens is we know the ruling. The fuqahai karam, the ulamai karam will tell you that it is mustahab, it is sunnah to quickly do iftar. To this extent, we delay the Maghrib Salah 5-10 minutes and we eat. Because why Allah SWT says start eating? So we are servant, when He says stop eating, we stop eating. When He says start eating, we stop, start eating. We don't say no, I'll keep a fast another half an hour extra. No, no, that will be makru. Why? Because we are abd. Abd listens, when He says do it, do it. We don't start to have our own thoughts. This is the abdiyat is the highest stage. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi. Purity for Allah, glorification to Allah, the one who has taken his servant, Abd. He could have said be Rasulihi. He could have said be Nabihi. He could have said be Safihi. He is chosen one said Abdihi. Because even after meeting Allah, after going above the seven heavens, Allah is praising him by saying, Glory to Allah who took his servant. So abdiyat is very important. That's why in the Kalima Shahada we say, Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. It's a abd first and rasul next. The abdiyat is of the highest status. So we have to be abd. We have to do things according to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the instructions shown by our beloved Prophet. He tells us to stop. That's why to have sehar till the end is mustahab. A lot of people, what they do is after Isha, they just have something to eat and go to sleep. So we're not fulfilling the sunnah of suhoor. So suhoor is to have something at the end time, the latter time. Just before we start our fast, before Subha Saadi we eat something, that's Mustahab the Sunnah. Why? Because we are abd, we are told we can eat till that time. And then when we break our fast, so immediately break the fast, even before Maghrib Salah, so we have become the true abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the thing, whether we understand it or not, this is a very important thing. If we start to use our own logic, we start to use our own intellect, we will fail. If a person starts to think, I've gone to the bathroom for the call of nature. I've, to, I've been told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wash my face, to wash my hands, to wash, do myself the head, to wash my feet. It doesn't make sense. My face hasn't gone dirty. If he starts to think with the, according to his intellect, according to his logic, he will fail. That's what Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu says, if deen was according to Aqal, then do you know the leather socks that we do masal, wiping. So what would happen is we wipe the soul, not the upper part. What do, we do? what do we do? We wipe the upper part of the souls. But according to Akbar, the chance will be because our feet, our souls will be the dirty part. We're supposed to do masanta. We don't do masanta. That will be against the sunnah. So the deed is according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders. That's why there are three stages. Tabiyat, Akal and Shariat. Jaha Tabiyat and Akal takrati hai, waha Akal ko lete hai. Or jaha Akal and Shariat takrati hai, waha am Shariat ko lete hai. This is a very important point. And if you can keep that in mind, that when a person is eating, he's got all the food, he's so hungry, and other people are looking at him, his tabiyat is telling him, eat, eat, eat. His aqal is saying, no, no, people are going to say, I'm greedy. So he will act according to the aqal. But when aqal and shariat takra, when that contradicts each other, then what will happen is we'll take the shariat. We won't take our aqal. No, no, why should I do uzu now for? My, why should I wash my face? No, no, Sharia has told you, if you go with the call of nature, if you break weight, you have to do wuzu. Whether your apple understands it or not, you have to. 
This is very important. The way Allah has told us, if we have kept our fast according to the way of Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will be happy. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So on that day, on the day of Eid, we say Allahu Akbar Takbir. Why? Alhamdulillah, we have fulfilled the commandment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so we that you be grateful. Now we become grateful because mashallah, you see the result now. That what, what has made us prepare ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing us. He said, Ayyama ma'budat. Like the verse I read, La Allah The next verse Allah starts, psychologically, He's preparing us. Ayyama ma'budat. Allah could have said, Shahrul Wahid. You're fasting for one month. What does Allah say? Ayyama ma'budat. But only a few days. So a person doesn't start to think, oh, so many days of fasting. No, no. In terms of all the 12 months, one month is only a few days. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing us that don't worry, the fast is not too much. It's only a few days. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even goes further to give us more concession. So if any of you is ill, Anyone who's traveling, he can fast another time. So Allah's made it so He's preparing us. He's making it easy for us that if we have these kind of excuses, <laughs> any of these kind of reasons, then we can fast in other time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and same with <laughs> Those who are elderly people who can't fast, they can give fidya. So Allah's made it so easy. But at the end, Allah said, But if you know the virtues and the value of fasting, then subhanAllah, you will surely fast. Even though you're traveling, you'll want to fast because the blessing is so much. So this month, my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahr Ramadan al How can we prepare? I want you to listen very carefully. How can we prepare for this month? And that preparation which will remain and will be eternal and steadfast, permanent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahr Ramadan al ladhi unzila fi al Quran. You know, when, when you think about Ramadan, the first thing that comes in our mind is fasting. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, what is He saying? Unzila fi al Quran. This is the month where the Quran was revealed. So more important than the fasting is the Quran. That we connect ourselves with the Quran. So Allah says, Um zila fi Quran. Using the failure of Adin Majhul. So he's saying that we need to understand who was the one who revealed so we get that connection with him. And Hudal Lin Nas, we refresh it and we get this reignite again that connection with the Quran, which is a guidance. So this month is the month of the Quran. This month is the month of the Quran. So how do we connect ourselves with the Quran? We make a preparation, we make a timetable. In that timetable, we need to make sure that we are reciting the Quran on a daily basis. Inshallah ta'ala, what is gonna happen? We're gonna have the 20 rakahs of tarawih, we're gonna be inshallah ta'ala, listening to the entire Quran, the complete Quran. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we do a khatam ourselves. I was speaking to a gathering, we are about a thousand people who came to our uh, Rikir Majlis, we have a spiritual gathering the last Friday every month. So I asked the audience that I want our brothers and sisters to recite 10 Jews every day. So in that way you are doing 10 khatams. So who will put the hands up? Half of the people, mashallah, put the hands up and they said, inshallah, that we will try to do that. And the rest of them said five or three. So each one of us, now, I said to them, I was just, I just came back from Palestine, uh, Jordan, Makkah, Medina, we have that, uh, we have that uh, annual tour in the Easter time. So 80 brothers and sisters went with me. 80 brothers and sisters. So I said to them, look, you're taking me, I have got Madrasa, but you're taking me, I'm going to charge you a very heavy penalty. So everybody got scared, I might be charging money. I said, you're you know, I'm going with you, I want everybody to spiritually benefit. So each one of you will have to make this promise that they will read 10 Jews every day. And it's very easy, one Jews before each namaz and one Jews after each salah. And the amazing thing, Alhamdulillah, when I said this, MashaAllah, ma majority of them, they read up to five khatams in that 15 days. That's 10 Jews every day. And they said, it was so easy. And I, because I told them, I thought, SubhanAllah, if I told them, at least I have to do the same. So Alhamdulillah, I myself, 
did my five khatams and that wasn't by sitting, by going to the masjid, coming back to the masjid in the airport, whilst waiting for the coach, whilst waiting on the immigration, whatever, because we had to go through so many different countries and uh, airports and things like that. So all the time that was on the line for immigration, line for showing the passport, Alhamdulillah being a Hafiz Quran, I continued reading the Quran and when I was in the Medina last day, I counted my paras, mashallah, I did 150 paras, which is five khatams. It was done easily. The reason I'm saying, now I'm not here to boast, I'm just saying it's so easy. And Imam Shafi Rahmatullah, he was noble habit in the month of Ramadan. You might be thinking, SubhanAllah, how do these people do it? And they managed to do it. They did one khatam in the daytime, one khatam in the evening time, in the night time. So they managed to do up to 60 khatams a month. These people were human beings like us. And those sisters who think to themselves that we can't do it because we've got home, all the cooking and all the cleaning up. Safiya Rahmatullahi Alayha, who is the mother of Hazrat Mullah Ilyas Rahmatullahi Alayhi, she used to do a complete khatam of the Quran every day plus under the 10 Jews. This was that connection with the Quran. 